This tutorial is on logarithmic and semi-logarithmic graphs. In order to understand what this is, we'll first of all have a look at the way that graphs are conventionally set out. Conventionally, graphs use a linear scale. That means numbers move sequentially. Along this bottom axis, we have 1, followed by 2, followed by 3. Along this axis, they're moving in factors of 10. 10, followed by 20, followed by 30, and so on. This is the way that most graphs are set out. To explore some of the issues with using this type of graph, we're going to use an example of how much someone was paid for their hours of work. And conventionally, we may see a line like this. In their first hour of work, they'll earn $10. In their second hour of work, they'll earn a total of $20 because they've earned 10 more dollars. In the next hour, they've earned another 10, which means they have a total of 30, and so on and so forth. But this doesn't fit for all sets of data. Let's look at this line here. In the first hour, this person earned $30. But in the next hour, they've earned $50, which gives them a total of $80 overall. And in the third hour, they've earned $100, which means they're going to have $180 overall. We can quickly see that this sort of data is very problematic for a linear scale graph. We refer to this sort of data as exponential. Exponential means that the rate is increasing over time, not staying constant as with the first example. So how we deal with exponential data is we use logarithmic scales or log scales. Log scales work like this. We'll continue to use the example from the previous page. Here on this axis, we start with 10, but instead of moving up in a linear fashion, we're going to move up in factors of four. So 10 times four is 40, 40 times four is 160, 160 times 4 is 640, so on and so forth. And you can see that we very quickly get to quite large numbers at the top of this scale. Along the bottom, we're going to continue to use a linear scale. So here's our line and the data from the previous graph, but let's try and plot it onto this logarithmic scale. So in the first hour, they earned $30. That we can put that in easily. In the second hour, they earned an additional 50, so that brought them to a total of 80. In the next hour, they've earned an additional 100, so that brings them to 180. In the next hour, they must have earned $200 in that hour, so that brings them to 380. And in the next hour, they must have earned $500 in that hour, which brings them to a total of $880. This is exponential growth. And here we can see, when we use a logarithmic scale, that we're very easily able to deal with this change in data. I want you to note that I only have a logarithmic scale along one axis. The other axis, as noted already, continues to use a linear scale. And for that reason, we refer to this graph as semi-logarithmic or a semi-log scale. In geography, you won't often come up against a full logarithmic scale, but it's important that you understand the difference between them. This is a semi-logarithmic scale that we're using. So to make our point further, we're going to have a look at um, some real geography data in relation to world megacities. And as we know, a megacity is a city with more than 10 million people in it. The data I'll be using is from the United Nations World Urbanization Prospectus 2014, and I will be using a linear scale along the bottom, going up in increments of 25 years, as you can see. But I have a logarithmic scale along this axis here with population. We start with 1 million, then move to 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, 16 million, and 32 million. They're going up by a factor of 2 each time. So the first city we're going to look at is Tokyo. It started with 11 million. 25 years later, it was at 26 million. In 2000, it was at 34 million. In 2025, it's projected to be at 36 million. And next city is New York. New York started with 12 million in 1950, went to 1975, 16 million. 18 million in 2000 and 20 million in 2025 as a projection. The next city we'll look at is Mexico. Mexico started with a very small 2.8 million in 1950. But by 1975, it had, put, it had expanded to a whopping 11.2 million. 2000 is 18 million and it's projected to be at 25 million in 2025. Lastly, let's have a look at Shanghai. Shanghai again started quite small, 4 million in 1950, 7 million in 1975, finally became a mega city around between 1975 and 2000, and in 2025 hit 
20 million. And that's Shanghai. You can see by looking at this how useful these graphs are. Here we have a city starting out with a very small population relatively, but in a very short period has had an enormous growth spurt. This is Mexico City. And using a, a semi-logarithmic scale, we're able to very easily plot that data. Also on this one graph, we can also have data about Tokyo with a huge 36 million people, which is the largest, largest mega city in the world. And at the same time, we're also able to have data very small or relatively very small, 2.8 million. It's a very, very useful way of plotting data. So there's one thing that we need to keep in mind when you are reading this. Classically, on a linear scale, where both are linear, any line that's pointing up sharply will mean that there's a massive increase taking place. Let's look at this line here. We can see the line has gone up sharply, and then there's been a slight flattening out, and then a slight flattening out again. The temptation to say, is to say that there's some sort of decline happening. But if we think about it carefully, we can recognize that the gap between here and here is 4 million. Equally, the gap between here and here is also 4 million. And the gap between here and here is 4 million again because we have this linear scale, uh, this logarithmic scale, a, a line that's tapering off, it can in fact mean that there is a constant in the data. Students often make that mistake. Equally, here we have this. We have, imagine that this line was to continue straight up. It would appear that the data was moving constant. The gap between here and here is 4 million, however, whereas the gap between here and here is 8 million. So in fact, we actually have a huge increase taking place in the data, even though the line has not varied its slope at all. These are the things you need to be very careful with when you're working with logarithmic, logarithmic scale and semi-logarithmic scale. It's not too difficult, and I don't imagine that you're going to um, have too many problems if you understand what you've seen so far. All the best. If you like the video, please subscribe. Please thumbs down if you don't like it or leave a comment.